Hello? Hello in here. Welcome to Convocation 2018. We begin in just a few minutes, but first, it's an important announcement. Remember, in the unlikely event of an emergency, you may be asked to leave the gymnasium. If you are asked to leave, please do so calmly. Take a moment now and locate the exit nearest you. There are exits to the rear, exits to the side, and exits behind the stage. Again, take a moment to locate the exit nearest you, and in the unlikely event you are asked to leave the gymnasium, please do so calmly. Now get ready because we are about to begin Convocation 2018. Good morning. We are ready to start Convocation 2018. My name is Joe LaBarbera. I am a professor of speech communication, and I'm delighted to serve as your MC for Convocation 2018. So what do you say we get this party started? First thing we're going to do is we are going to take a selfie. You can't pass up the opportunity. On three, everybody say, and now the starting lineup for your Milwaukee Bucks. <laughs> Too much? How about just we on one, two, and three? All right. Now we're ready to go. First off, you have a few pieces of information at your seat. You'll find these to be very valuable. If you have a moment at some point today, please take a moment just to look through them. One item you'll find is a, a document that outlines all of the professional development opportunities for all faculty and staff. Really well put together and you'll enjoy. Yes, nice round of applause for the <laughs> professional development opportunities. Also, uh, when you have a spare moment, look over some of the item, other items. You'll receive weekly emails, by the way, regarding those professional development opportunities. Just take a moment to check them out. Second item you'll want to check out is a bookmark. Now this has information about the upcoming author series. This year's text is called Black Man in a White Coat, A Doctor's Reflections on Race and Medicine, and it's by Dr. Damon Tweedy. We hope you'll read along with us here at FSCJ. Each of the FSCJ libraries have multiple copies that you can check out and read if you don't already have a copy. Again, Black Man in a White Coat, A Doctor's Reflection on Race and Medicine. So grab one this week. Finally, you'll see a menu. Now this menu is from 20 West Cafe. It's on Adam Street downtown and they will be delighted to see you should you choose to stop by for breakfast or lunch in the near future. You will be pleasantly surprised not only by the quality and taste of the food but the overall experience. And if you like to get a discount, your FSCJ ID gets you a 20% discount. It's not like Bed Bath & Beyond at, at one item at one time. This is all the time till the end of the year. So that's 20% off, again, between now and the end of 2018. Now, let's bring up our first speaker. Convocation 2018 begins with interim president Kevin Hyde. Turns out, like me, interim president Hyde has a Milwaukee connection. While I'm originally from Milwaukee, 
President Hyde is a partner and employment lawyer with Foley and Lardner LLP, which is headquartered in Milwaukee, which is my hometown. He's also a former president of the Jacksonville City Council. He served as the chief administration, uh, administrative officer for the city of Jacksonville. He's the chair of the University of North Florida Board of Trustees, and he does so much more. Let's welcome the greatest interim president of all time, Kevin Hyde. You know, to be honest, I don't know how hard you have to work to be the greatest interim president of all time, but I'll, I'll take it, Joe. I, you know, sitting there listening to Joe, I've, I've got a new goal in life. It is at one point in my life, Joe, I want to have as much energy and enthusiasm as you do. So we're going to do this. Joe, you need to tell me what your caffeine is in the morning. Or otherwise, I guess I better just go ahead and take your class. And so, But good morning, and thank you for welcoming me. You know, I, I kind of feel like it's my first day in school here. Uh, obviously, it's my first convocation, and I've only been with you about four months, but just walking around this morning and going to the breakfast, I really appreciate the enthusiasm and excitement that we have there, and just want to thank everybody so much for welcoming me, and we're going to kick off the school year here, and there is a lot to talk about that we have done that you have done, and that's what I want to really focus on this morning. One of the things I think is really important as we go through this is to recognize those people who have done some really good work. And so I want to recognize some folks behind here who are our 2018 Distinguished Faculty Award winners. And you'll see them on the screen behind us. Our Professor of Business, and if you're here, would you stand up so your colleagues can recognize you? The Professor of Business, Dr. Justin Pate. A Professor of English, Dr. Tim Gilmore. Professor of Business, Christina Goodall. <laughs> Professor of Fire Science Technology, Robert Massacott. There we go. Thanks, Robert. And Professor of Chem Chemistry, Dr. Holly Vigra Griva. <laughs> and Holly, I totally botched your name. If you will get with me afterwards, you can teach me how to properly pronounce that. You know, last year was the first year that we did an award for the FSCJ Adjunct Award winner. And Dr. Gail Bondi, who is an English for Speaker of Other Languages professor, was recognized earlier. But if she's here, I'd like her to stand so you can recognize her. And so congratulations to our, all of our winners. You know, when you came in, you probably saw behind you a screen recognizing those employees who were celebrating years of service milestones, whether it be 10 or 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, and yes, even 45 years. And we all know that you have made a significant investment of your professional life and your achievements, and we just want to continue to recognize those folks. If you happen to miss those names, the slides will be playing uh, at the end. And I also like to honor the winner of the Administrative and Professional Collaborative Exceptional Service and Initiative Award winner, who this year is Senior Associate Director of Student Recruitment, Terry Hollingshead. Terry, are you here? Thanks, Terry. So we certainly want to recognize that. And we don't want to forget, certainly, our Career Employees Council Recognition of Excellence Award, Senior Specialist Rosa Wynn. Rosa, if you're here. Well, Rosa brought her cheering crowd. That's very good. But let's give all of these winners a round of applause for their achievements. Now, in recognizing these individuals for the great work that they have done, I'm going to do something that's probably a bit risky. And I want to recognize individually someone who's really helped me out a lot personally. You all know, and I've said this many times publicly, I know the least about how things operate here than anyone. And so whenever the, the student concerns and questions are came up or just issues you need to deal with, I needed a go-to player. You, I called it a utility infield player, if you know the baseball term. Someone you could always turn to, he and his team, just to help get things done. And I want to recognize Michael Litchfield, if he's here. <laughs> Michael here? And actually, I'd like to ask if Michael's here to come up to the stage. Did Michael make it? He did not. All right. Well, when you see Michael, 
compliment him and recognize because continually, whenever we had an issue and I needed somebody to run down the ground ball, he was there to do it. I want to recognize him for that great effort. But really more importantly than recognizing Michael per se, recognize all of you and thank you. Uh, as you know, uh, as I said, you know, I came in here as a practicing lawyer who had represented the college before but didn't really have higher education experience. You all have made it easy for me because any stupid question I've asked or thing that I've requested, you have gone out of your ways to help me. And I just want to say personally, thank you very much for doing that. And I think that's just emblematic of the great community spirit that we have here. Because I know all of you believe in the mission and the purpose of what FSCJ does. And as I go around town and talk to business leaders and others, I get the same thing from them. Their interactions with you, their interactions with our student tells us how much they, are, they know that you are committed to this work. And there's a group I want to recognize now up front here who are also committed to this work. Volunteers who give their time and their energy and their thought to lead the direction of this school. And that's our trustees who are with us here today. And so as I introduce them, I'd like to ask all of you to stand. And I'd like for you at the end of the introductions to thank them for their work. Our vice chair for Nassau County, Candy Holloway. <laughs> Sitting next to her is our vice chair for Duval County, Mac McGee. Mac is, if you've been to these convocations, you've probably seen Mac before. He is the longest serving trustee we have. He goes back to the Governor Bush era, correct? So Mac, thank you for your service. Trustee Laura DeBella from Nassau County. Next to her, Trustee Wayne Young. And Trustee Tom Johnix. Thanks, Tom. And sitting next to them are some people who really help me every day, but more importantly, help the entire college, and that is the executive cabinet. I'd like to recognize him, John Wall, our provost. <laughs> Dr. Marie Nagy, Vice President of Institutional Effectiveness and Advancement. <laughs> she too brought her cheering crown. Jana Coy, Vice President of Online and Workforce Education. The guy who keeps the books, Al Little, Vice President of Business Services. Thank you. So please join me in recognizing them. Now we're going to have group participation. We've called out some people, but we know that there are many others of you here who have really gone above and beyond, who have received some awards in your own particular area. So if you have received a, an award or a credential, any acknowledgement that has come, out, come about in the last year, would you just raise your hand so we can see how many folks we have? Quite a few. Congratulations to all of you. And we know that as an educational institution, everyone here is committed to lifelong learning. And maybe you've gone on in this past year since the last convocation to earn a degree or a certificate program of some sort whether it's here at FSCJ or somewhere else. If you fit in that category, would you a quick showing of hands? Great. Thank you for your commitment to education. And Joe's already talked a little bit about professional development opportunities. So let's conclude with, if you've participated in a professional development opportunity anyway since last competition, please raise your hand. Wow. I mean, seriously, look around. That's the majority of people in this audience. That is great work, and we really appreciate that. You know, and there's a group here that not only helped put this together physically, but who are right now are getting truly ready for tomorrow, as I know many of you are. And that's those who weren't able to be here. They are folks working in various areas of the college, such as student services, advising center, and business officers. Uh, today, they're meeting with students, processing documents, addressing questions and concerns all with the goal of getting our students ready to go tomorrow on the first day. So let's give them a hand for those folks who couldn't be with us this morning. And as I've said, I've really enjoyed my time here over the last few months, and I appreciate the opportunity the board has given me, but more importantly, the opportunity that you've given me and welcomed me to the family, so to speak. And as I came in, I told you there was a couple of areas that we needed to work on, and I want to give you maybe a brief update on that. 
But let me give you an overall impression, and you are free to correct me because I wasn't at convocation last year or years before, so my observation is based solely on what I saw this morning. And that is that there is a very positive sense of energy, that there is a very goodwill and vibe here, that you want the very best for this institution, and I feel it, and I hope that you are feeling the same thing. Because candidly, some of the issues that we had to work on over the summer weren't the most exciting, and there's some tough decisions that have to be made. You can all collectively groan with me now as together we say the words ERP. <laughs> but we've spent a lot of time working on that because it's so important to the, to the institution, whether it be dealing with our enrollment process or any other things that the ERP uh, works and affects. We're not there yet, but we're working on it. Ron Smith, Bob Larson, and a lot of folks on the team are working very hard on that. And I appreciate everything that you have done to work through this process. And I think the students are even seeing some improvement in that. Again, not a glamorous thing to talk about necessarily, but absolutely vital to the college. I want to call out the financial aid team. Not that they're the only ones who've done good work, but particularly good work. That was an issue that really needed to work on. The financial aid team, and led by Al and his office, has really made some great headway in improving the processes and services that are able to provide our students. We know that so many of our students are dependent upon financial aid and that it's our job to make sure that they receive that for which they are eligible. And I think the processes are getting better. For instance, the functionality of MyFSCJ I think is making for smoother transactions. I heard from some this morning talking out there during the breakfast about the lines are shorter, which is a good thing because the problems are being solved otherwise. So I appreciate all of the great work that's being done on that. And now an issue that you've heard us talk a lot about because it's critical for what we all do, and that's enrollment. No question that the prior year was not a high point of our achievement in enrollment. Let me just say things are getting better. We're not all the way there yet, but as we stand right now, yesterday we were at 103% of final college credit enrollment for fall last term. In other words, we are up. Now that, yes, please applaud for that. And the reason I want you to applaud for that is because it truly is the result of individual efforts. Uh, I have seen examples of people talking one-on-one -on -one with students to almost manually get them enrolled. We had the situation over the summer where a whole week was devoted to people stepping away from their jobs, getting in a room and making over 800 calls to students to try to make sure that they knew how to get enrolled. We've had examples of people uh, just reaching out, whether it's on a financial aid issue or some student service issue, just trying to make sure that people knew we were ready and wanting them to come, and the results are speaking for themselves. Now, we've had some drops because of non-payment. We will try to chase those down and do what we can to see if we can get those folks back enrolled. But Rich Turner sends us a report every other day, and we see that the enrollment growth is strong. The numbers are important. But what's more important is the fact that it shows our commitment, your commitment, to really reaching out to the communities that we serve, the folks of Duval and Nassau County, and making sure they know we are there for them. And because of your individual efforts, things are turning around. And I just want to say thank you very much for that. One of the things I think is just critically important, and you've heard me say this before, is that we truly become a community partner. I know that we're FSCJ, and I see us wearing our logos with that. Candidly, I liked it better when it was Florida Community College at Jacksonville. And the reason I liked it better, well, at least one person agrees with me. <laughs> the reason I like that, and you know, the, I don't think the legislature is going to change it just for me, um, is because I think that reflects who we are. We are this community's college. Think about the fact we serve more people than all of the other educational institutions. We are the community's colleges. And I go out and meet with business leaders, whether it be in finance or banking or healthcare or aviation or logistics. They are looking to us to help provide for them the workers to run their businesses, which in turn strengthen our economy here locally. That's what I mean by we are the community college. Think about we are the bridge for our students to get from their studies to their jobs. And so as we're doing this work together, I hope we really have the opportunity to always think about the community in which we serve. And one of the final areas that we had to address this summer, and you all are very aware of this, and that is the budget. 
Uh, I commend the board for making the tough decisions along with the administration with regard to the budget that we have to set. It was difficult and we've made no bones about that. It affected perhaps personally some people that you know and we regret that. But it was necessary for, for us to make sure that we were always going to be on a very firm and financial stable footing and we are. And the way I like to describe it, this year's budget I believe is a floor, not the ceiling. We're only going to go up from here. And it's not a function of necessarily spending more money. That's not what it's about. The budget is a reflection of our priorities and where we are at any given point in time. And I truly believe we are on the way up. And I hope you share my opinion. You're free to disagree if you'd like, but I think morale is improving too. Again, I don't have a lot of history to suggest otherwise, but just in talking to you, I really get the sense that we are in a good place as we've opened our doors to conversations Maybe you've seen the suggestion boxes around campus. We want your suggestions on that. Tomorrow there is going to be a link to the SharePoint site where you can review some of the suggestions that you and your colleagues have made. And you can see what's being done in response to some of those. And we certainly want you to continue to give us those suggestions. One of the things we talked about was the creation of an innovation team. It's kind of a think tank of a group of people just to sit around and to say, where do we need to go next? What are ideas that we ought to ought we be pursuing. They met earlier this week again, and I'm really excited about the ideas and opportunities that they're going to come out with. And in the vein of us being a real community, our college for our community, one of the things I find real impressive is the philanthropic spirit that we have here. You know, I, I think it's vital that all of us in our own ways, in whatever way you, you find that to be, find a way to give back beyond the professional work that you're other, otherwise doing. You're giving back through your professional work. But each of us, I think, can look for the opportunities to find a way to contribute to a cause, to a nonprofit organization or a community group with our time, our treasure, our talent, whatever it might be, because we know there are so many opportunities for our community to do that. We're going to be talking about in the coming weeks a particular volunteer program where you can request time off from your current duties to go spend some time volunteering. We're getting the final details worked out. But I think that that will not only be important for our community to see of how we're doing it, I think you're going to see that there's absolutely going to be some of the most personally rewarding things that you're going to do. I understand last year we participated in Giving Tuesday kind of in a way of more than giving money, but really physically giving back. And we're going to do that again this year on November 27th, 27th 2018. So I hope that you will uh, truly mark your calendars for that. I had the chance in May and early June to go around and spend some time on each of the campuses and centers, kind of a town hall session. Kind of gave me shudders from my old days as a city councilman doing town hall meetings. But going back and listening, and one of the things that I picked up on was that maybe there had been some feeling of disconnectedness between the individual campuses and the overall college. We're obviously part of one college but had we lost that campus feel a little bit, and at least it was my perception, I, I think a lot of you told me that we had done that, that we want to really move somewhat back to that community feel on each campus. I realize and believe that South Campus may have a different feel on a given day than what Kent does, or North, or Downtown, or Deerwood, or Nassau, or Cecil. So what we're, what we're going to do is now create a little bit of a structure. I'm even a little bit worried about even saying this. It's not a new job. It's not a new position. But we've asked five people to be a campus liaison. And what a campus liaison is going to do, one at each of our locations, is going to be ways to pull together campus ideas, and campus activities. They're going to host campus leadership meetings. They're going to serve as a liaison to the cabinet and to me. They're going to work with a newly established events committee at each campus, giving each location the autonomy to develop and host their own events with the goal of inspiring greater collegiality. So to some degree, we want to bring the community feel even back to the individual campuses, and these campus liaisons are a starting step for that. So I'd like to introduce them to you. Uh, you know them already. Uh, John Wall is going to be working here directly with South Camp. Stand up, John, so they go. If you're on South, he's your liaison. Jana Coy is going to be at Deerwood. Ian Newhart, he's going to be at Kent and Cecil. Flip around Cedric, you're going to be at North and Nassau. 
And Dr. Nagy is going to be for downtown. Work with these liaisons to bring ideas together for your individual campuses or centers to create a, a strong sense of community there. Another area that I hope will assist with aligning faculty, student services, the enrollment te team, and the director of campus operations is what we're calling a campus ambassador, again, at each of our locations. They will serve as the point of contact for faculty at their specific campus, will lead any necessary campus-based faculty gathers, and collaborate with human resources and faculty onboarding as well. Let me introduce these folks to you. Talana Torres for South Campus, if you'll stand. There's Talana back there, thank you. Dr. Robert Green for Deerwood Center. Dr. Jeff Hess for the Kent Campus. And also Cecil. Dr. Neil Henning for North and Nassau. Neil. And Dr. Tiffany Hunter for downtown. Thank you. And personally, let me just thank uh, each of them for, uh, this is not a new role for them. This is an addition to the work they are, are already doing. So I want to thank you very much for that. You know, I asked a dumb question the other day. I said, like, what, what are you supposed to wear to convocation? I've never been, one, been to one. And so they said, well, you have to wear a suit. OK, I'll wear a suit. What day is tomorrow? It's Friday. We have a sacrosanct tradition in my law firm that I get really upset when it can't be upheld. And that is, you wear jeans on Friday. So I looked in the bylaws board, and I said to myself, what presidential power do I have? <laughs> the answer is not much. <laughs> but I thought to myself, so as a presidential proclamation, I am hereby proclaiming every Friday Jeans Day. <laughs> and now the board may, they can decide if that later on. <laughs> You know, this year, um, we once again placed in the silver category for uh, our performance funding. That, that's a good place to be. We are not, however, a silver institution. I want us to aspire to be a gold institution. And that's a goal I'm setting for this institution uh, because I know that it, it can be done. We're going to work toward that goal by consistently doing our individual jobs to the best of our ability, supporting each other along the way, and we're going to focus on the four key performance metrics, retention rate, completion rate, job placement or continuing education, and entry level wages. These are things that drive the metrics, but as much as anything, they drive the success of our students. For instance, one of the things I'm most proud about is that our, our entry level wages is above the statewide average for the entire college system. That's a credit to you all for teaching our students and giving them the skills and the abilities and frankly the opportunities to get out into our community and other places and earn a good wage. So this year I hope is a year that we truly can go for gold. Well, the other thing I want to think about here is that all of you should look for opportunities to think about where you can excel in your individual and personal achievement, where your students can excel and where we as an organization and institution can excel. There are numerous award programs that community colleges and state colleges like ours can aspire to, whether it be for the Association of Florida Colleges, through the American Association of Community Colleges, the National Institute for Staff and Organizational Development, and the Association of Community College Trustees. I've asked Dr. Nagy and some folks on her team to look among these awards and say, what's one we really want to try for? And, she, and she's working on that, and we're going to get that list. This is not about going for an award for award's sake. But if you're like me, you need a tangible goal. We need a tangible goal to shoot for. So in the coming weeks, we're going to put out there what that goal will be, and that collectively, I know that we can achieve it. Because again, we are going to pick this goal and pursue it. Well, let me conclude now by just giving you a couple of thoughts and really two stories that I think are so vital. I had the opportunity, and I don't think he'd mind me saying his name, to meet with Greg Smith. He is the head of Bank of America here in Jacksonville. They have had a long and good relationship with this college. And so in doing these meetings, and I've done a lot of them in the, in the months that I've been here, you kind of brace yourself wondering, what are you really going to hear? 
so we sit down and we're having lunch with Greg and you know he's talking about an organization that here in Jacksonville employs over 7,000 people I said well Greg what can we do better and so I'm waiting for the answer you know bracing for what he goes there's nothing you can do better but you got a problem so, all right now it's gonna come you can tell he's trying to be polite he said your problem is he said your problem is really my problem and my problem is I can't get enough of your graduates and I want you to think about that here's a major employer in town saying I can't get enough of the good students that you are producing and I thought that's okay that's really okay because we can work on that but more than anything it told me and I hope that you all take it as a direct reflection of the great work that all of you have been doing the second story I want to tell you occurred just two days ago and I tell you this story because it shows this one-on-one-on-one-on-one -on -one -on -one -on -one student concern I got a call from our board chair Karen Bowling who couldn't be with us this morning Karen got a call from a person here in town that she and I both know and I have no idea how this connection began but there was one of our international students stuck at John F Kennedy Airport in New York he was being detained by Customs and Border Patrol because he didn't have proof that he was enrolled in college, which was necessary for his visa. And the word came out, and this was at 6.30 Tuesday night, that he had one hour to show that he was a student or he was going to be back on a plane to Germany rather than coming to Jacksonville. Through a series of phone calls, and I only made one of them, made it to John Wall, John, I know, made a number of calls. Within one hour, that student was on a plane to Jacksonville because we were... You should applaud for that. That's taking care of one of our own. I know that I interrupted John's dinner when I made that call. And I don't know what your phone says about me, John, when I call you, but... I'm sure we've all had the experience when you see, oh, you know, do I pick up the phone? But, and I know, John, you interrupted some other people's dinner to make that call. But the fact is, the problem was taken care of. That's commitment, and I hear and see every single day small examples like that. That is indicative of the work that you do, and it is indicative of who you are. And as we enter into this year, please take that spirit, and I know you will, and we're going to have a great year. Thank you for allowing me to work with you. I truly enjoy it. Thank you, Adam President Hyde, uh, your pen. By the way, we uh, are pretty full in speech this semester, but if you see Dean Hess or Elena Smith in his office, we will be happy to get you an override. No problem. Um, and, and enthusiasm, you know, I think it was Ralph Waldo Emerson who said, nothing great can be achieved without enthusiasm. And it's something that I live by every day, and I think it spreads as well. So if you share that in your office or your classroom, you just might make someone's day that much nicer. It's all about enthusiasm. And speaking of enthusiasm, we have so many talented people here at FSCJ. Too many to count, but you do get to meet one of them right now. She is a professional vocalist, a recording artist and actress, and professor of surgical technology. Please welcome Matissa Hill. Thank you. Good morning, FSCJ superstars. All the superstars, raise your hand. That's right, that's right. So I just wanted to um, thank everyone for this opportunity to come before you on this morning. I am the surgical tech program director and I have some students that every now and then need some motivation, as so we do. Um, as faculty and staff, we need motiv motivation. So encouraging each other is very important throughout the day as, as much as it's important to encourage our students. So this song actually was written um, I was still an instructor, but this song has actually helped out in the classroom, believe it or not. I had some students tell me if it wasn't for that song, I wouldn't have passed my test. Uh, but I, I shared a song with them because it's a song that keeps encouraging myself. I wrote this song called Gotta Stay Up. 
So if everybody would just sit up to the tip of your chair for me. So what that does is get you ready. That way, when it's time to do something, you don't have to get ready because you stay ready, right? So we're going to sit up. Now, when you stand up, at that point, you can do some things that you couldn't do while you were sitting down, right? So go ahead and stand up with me. Standing up now gets you ready to do some things you couldn't do while you were sitting down. But if you stay up, if you stay up, you can help somebody else stay up as well, okay? All right, go ahead and start that track for me. Feel free to move around. Clap your hands and join in with me as we stay up today. I'll stay up, won't let nobody hold me down. I'll stay up, good times already coming around. I'll stay up, I'll stay up. I'll stay up, stay up. Life can get so hard, it can break you, but don't let it. Come on. No, don't let it. Just make up your mind. It's going to push you to the limit. And you ain't never got to stop. Keep moving. Yesterday is gone. Got to leave. You've got to get your second wind soon to know that the sun is going to shine. you got to stay up. Situations always trying to bring you down. got to know it's going to change and turn around. And even if it's raining, got to keep a smile. You gotta know it's gonna change and turn around. And even if it's raining, gotta keep a smile. Look here. A new day is gonna break through the night. Break through all the tears that you cried. Just keep holding. your wings and you can fly away go on and fly away your eyes are open so no one can keep you from your destiny yeah. Ooh, keep moving and leave the past behind you've got to get your second win Trying to bring it down. It's gonna change and turn around. You gotta keep a smile. Guess what? I'll stay up, won't let nobody hold me down. I'll stay up, good times already coming around. I'll stay up, I'll stay up, I'ma keep smiling. Stay up. You gotta stay up, up, up. Thank you. Thank you. So my charge to you, keep our students up, keep each other lifted up by smiling every day. Oh my goodness, Matisha Hill. How do they do it at the concerts? It's like this now? Can't use lighters anymore, right? I'll forget to turn that off. My battery will be dead in a little bit. Oh, <laughs> oh man. I might have to enroll in the surgical tech program. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, now it's time to talk about FSCJ alumni. You know, thousands of people have completed one or more degrees right here 
at FSCJ through a lot of different programs of study. And the FSCJ alums now represent our college in almost every profession and every industry. So please raise your hand if you are an FSCJ alumnus. Wow. All right, keep it up. How about if you have a child or a spouse who is an FSCJ alumnus? All right, keep them up, keep them up. Now, if you've ever taken a class at FSCJ, raise your hand. Oh, that's awesome. All right, keep it up. Now, if you enjoyed the implementation of PeopleSoft. <laughs> it was time to put your hands down anyway. That's OK. Uh, <laughs> Here's something you might not know about enrollment and alums here at FSCJ. One of the following celebrity, uh, celebrities has taken a class at FSCJ. Now, was it A, Brad Pitt, B, Julia Roberts, C, Tim McGraw, or D, Cher? C, wow, what a great crowd. Correct answer, country music artist Tim McGraw. He's an FSCJ alum. He sold more than 50 million records worldwide. You young people see me after this and I'll tell you what a record is. <laughs> Here's another one. Which of the following is an FSCJ alumnus? Is it Dr. Charles Moreland, Congressman John Rutherford, or State Representative Clay Yarborough? <laughs> Tricky one, but you knew it again. The correct answer is all of them. And final question. Can you guess how many people are FSCJ alumni? Is it A, less than 100,000, B, more than 139,000, or C, exactly 125,000? <laughs> Correct answer is B. Wow, FSCJ has more than 139,000 alums. That is incredible. Now, if you raise your hand to show you were an FSCJ alum, the Alumni Association wants to get to know you better. So all you need to do is visit fscj.edu forward slash alumni, and you can connect with other alums just like you through social media and another, uh, another number of programs. And I'm certain you'll also see their emails in your inbox every week, uh, it seems sometimes. Uh, great stuff, and sometimes every semester. So keep an eye out for it and give it a read. And the network of FSCJ alumni who have gone on to do remarkable things is really extensive. And we're honored to welcome some of those alumni back here to Convocation 2018. They are here today to share their experiences as a student and how their time here at FSCJ shaped their lives today. Please join me in welcoming our Director of Alumni Relations, Angela Mack. Well, good morning. I have the distinct honor of moderating our alumni panel, and I'm an FSCJ alumna who obtained an Associate in Arts. We have more than 139,000 FSCJ alumni in our community and across the globe, but today you'll have a chance to hear from four alumni who are enjoying success in their careers and making a difference in the communities they serve. So let me introduce you to our panelists. Our first is Jacqueline Redloff. She is Vice President and Counsel with Deutsche Bank Global Market Groups. <laughs> Dr. Kathy Knight Burns, Superintendent of Nassau County Schools. <laughs> Dr. Charles E. Moreland, Director of Community Affairs, Office of Mayor Lenny Curry, City of Jacksonville and Dr. Deborah Brabham, Instructional Program Manager, Scholar in Residence with the Frisch Institute for Senior Care. So to read their complete bios, please refer to the Convocation Program. So let's start with our first question, which will be for Jacqueline and Dr. Moreland. So please talk about how FSCJ played a role in your achievement of personal, professional, and or academic goals. Jacqueline? Um, well, FSCJ was a pretty large game changer for me. Um, it allowed me to finish my bachelor's degree because um, when I was almost ready to finish up my associate's um, degree was when the BAS program started. And I was about to transfer to UNF and try to figure out, navigate my way through that so that I could get the bachelor's degree because it was a very big goal of mine. 
and that program um, allowed me to finish my bachelor's degree in 18 months while I was working. And then that allowed me to really pursue my big dream and goal in life of becoming an attorney. So after I graduated from the BES program, I had the opportunity, I got in and was accepted to Florida Coastal School of Law and graduated um, that program as well and was able to do things like law review and some, of, some really prestigious and cool activities. That allowed me to get the job that I have loved for the last five years at, at Deutsche Bank. And now it's, it's, um, it's, very, it's, it's very bittersweet to be sitting in this position today because I actually um, just gave my notice to Deutsche Bank this week um, because I've been offered a position as a director in legal for a bank up in New York, which is also like I've wanted to live in New York and, and be part of that scene since I was a little girl. So a lot of my major life milestones have been reached because of that program and everything that the school did for me. So, so let me just simply say thank you for the opportunity to be here on, on this panel and to thank all of you in the room for what you do for the students of our city and from all over the world that come to FSCJ for their education. Um, my journey started as a 17-year-old graduate from Douglas Anderson School of the Arts, and I knew that I wanted to be in public service. I wanted to be a firefighter. I, I grew up in Grand Park in that fire station right down the street. I used to play in the park right across there. I used to see that fire engine going up and down the street, and I said that's what I wanted to do when I grew up, when I became an adult, graduated from school. So personally and professionally and academically, FSCJ, um, I owe FSCJ for everything that I've been able to become, um, educationally, personally, and uh, academically. Uh, I can tell you that even before I enrolled into the program, the fire service science program, my parents, were, we were visiting the college um, to make sure that I was right on track. So when I graduated in June, uh, the very next week, I was in fire service, fire school. So there was not a gap, just about a week, that was it. Uh, I was right in there and, uh, and fortunate enough, when I turned 18, I was, uh, I was hired by the city of Jacksonville. So from a personal standpoint, that was the launching pad for me to, to go on and do some wonderful things in the department. I'm the first African American to be division chief of rescue in the fire and rescue department. And, and all that began, the roots come from FSCJ, um, and then the first African American that has come all the way up through every rank in the fire department to become the director of fire chief of our, our large, 15th largest fire department in the United States. So, all of that is a result of, uh, is a result of the foundation that was established here at FSCJ. So I'm very appreciative of the work that um, all of you do to educate the minds of young people. I was one of them, and, um, and I'm very thankful for, for what you do. So personally, professionally, and academically, FSCJ was the uh, foundation for my success. Wonderful. <laughs> so Dr. Rabham, when you think about FSCJ and your time here as a student, you think of Think of Professor Ann Gooch. How many people remember Professor Ann Gooch? Raise your hands. Okay, so she was my humanities teacher, and what stood out for me was she made us take onus of our grade. So once she reviewed the course syllabus, she asked us to make a sign a contract. Do you want a, a, a grade of A, B, C, F? So she put the onus on us. I too was 17 years old when I came to FSCJ and Dr. Hennon liked to say that I was homegrown and that is true. But um, she put the onus on us to make a decision, what grade do you want? And not only did she put the onus on us to do that, but as an instructor she outlined all the performance measures that you needed to do to achieve that A, that B, that C, or that F. And I think that helped me in multiple ways. Number one, as a young adult, it allowed me to understand the, the value and the importance of responsibility. Um, and also it exposed me to the arts, such as t 
to get an A, of course, um, being an overachiever, I signed up for a, a letter grade of A. And one of those things required me to attend um, several artistic events here at the Civic Auditorium. How many people remember the Civic Auditorium? Okay, so it's now the Time Union Center, but it was the Civic Auditorium then. And so I got a chance to attend all these artistic events which opened me up to the arts. So when you look at my playlist, it extends from Frank Sinatra, Michael Jackson, Adele, so the arts. And I think being a nurse, um, nursing is both a science, an art, and a science. So it really did help me. Thank you for that question. OK, the next question is for Dr. Burns and for Dr. Brabham. What do you feel FSCJ excelled at and how has it impacted you after you left the school? Dr. Burns? FCJ, Mr. Hyde, it was when I came here. That dates me a little, I'm sure. FSCJ, first of all, was an opportunity for me, a high school senior who really didn't think or make plans for college. It excelled at being an opportunity, but also being available. It was in close proximity to Nassau County, so I could travel to that campus. It was affordable and it was achievable because it was a small dose of what I was aiming for, which was my two-year degree. The other thing I want to say, and I know it's been a few years ago, she mentioned one of the professors that I remember very well, but I also want to say relationships. And you all know as educators, truly, we can have technology, we can do all these things, but it's truly about relationships. It's interesting that she referred to one of her professors, and I want to refer to Dr. Shonda Rhonda. Does anyone ever remember that name? It's been many years ago. But he was a phenomenal algebra teacher. <laughs> and I had no use for algebra and could think of any way I would ever use it in my life. And truly thought of dropping out of college. I can't do this because of that. But what a phenomenal educator he was and what a difference he made and what time he took to help me to understand and grasp the concept and to excel in that class. So it truly is all about relationships. You cannot lose the fact that we must make personal connections with students for them to succeed. Dr. Bradley? What was the question? <laughs> what, do you, what do you feel FSCJ excelled at and how has it impacted you after you left the school? Oh, okay, so we have several people uh, in the audience that are health professions. We know that hand washing is a first line of de defense against um, infection. So FSCJ for me was a first line of defense uh, from poverty. So growing up in an in a area of low socioeconomic class, um, coming to FSCJ, I was able to overcome the challenges. I was a first-generation college student. I'm proud of that. My family's proud of that. We was... So um, coming here allowed me to reach my professional goals. Um, I was able to make a connection with a counselor. They call them advisors now, but my counselors, they, sent, they spent a lot of time with uh, me and other students as well, uh, making sure that we was on the right academic track. Um, so they were able to look at our transcripts and determine, okay, perhaps you're not ready to go into the technical nursing. During that time, the ADN program was technical nursing, practical nursing was vocational nursing. And so we, they, we made a decision together that perhaps if I go through the vocational track, then that will prepare me more precisely to go through the technical nursing track, and it did. And so I'm grateful that I've been able to serve here in the community in various roles um, in nursing. Um, I've been able to travel abroad. Um, I'm from Duval County, but I've had several life experiences, and I attribute that to Florida Community College of Jacksonville. So I'm very grateful. Um, I was overprepared for the workforce. So when I um, got my first job in nursing, I was 18 years old when I passed the State Board of Nursing. And so when I got my first job as a practical nursing, I was overprepared. So I was not only overprepared, but well prepared to enter into the workforce, to um, pay attention to patient safety, serve on several committees, so I attribute that again to Florida State College of Jacksonville, also known as FJC. 
<laughs> okay, our next question is for Jacqueline. What is one of your favorite memories of your time spent at FSCJ? I would take that back to um, when, when that fateful day that I'll never ever forget when um, I came in for my counseling with uh, Dr. Litt and I had, I was lost in the educational system. FSTJ was the fourth community college I was, I was coming to and I was, I was just desperate to get to that bachelor's degree as I mentioned. And um, Dr. Litt went through my, I think I had like 110 hours or something crazy of all these transcripts and all these different things I had done. And I had actually started out my career as a firefighter and gone to paramedic school. And so she went line by line through every credit that I had, and by the end of it, we discovered that I could have that bachelor's degree in 18 months. And I'll never forget, I was driving underneath the bridge, um, underneath Southside Atlantic area, it's the St. John's Bluff, um, 9A at the time, and I, I'll never forget, it was, holy cow, I could still go to law school. And so then the next 18 months became about making that milestone happen. And, Going back to what President Hyde was talking about earlier, it was really, she took the time to sit down and take care of me very individually. And then over the next 18 months, I was able to come to have a family within the school. And I still, to this day, get together with two ladies that I met in the program that really encouraged me and helped me on every leg of, of going through the law school. So it was, I'll never forget that day. Okay, our last question, and this is for Dr. Burns or for Dr. Moreland. What advice can you give to us as faculty and staff to help us inspire our current students to reach their own personal and professional levels of success? Dr. Burns? And I think I alluded to that earlier. It's truly about the relationship, making the connection. You know, when you build a house, it's important to have a solid foundation because if there are cracks in their foundation or issues that come up, then your house is not strong. And you all are really establishing the foundation for students' futures at this college. And I think that we must ensure that we are covering every area, not only allowing, providing a schedule, but we're providing support for students as they go through the process. Uh, Mr. Hyde referred to the contacts that you all made with students and the phone calls that were made. I think that's important because for whatever reasons, life many times gets in the way of our goals or our aspirations and making connection and letting them know there is someone that's connected to them and following through this process will make a difference. Dr. Moore. <laughs> so. I, I believe that um, as faculty, staff, professors and all, I think it's important to be inspirational leaders, um, servant leaders, recognizing the role that you have in guiding the direction of our next generation of leaders. It's so important. We're, we're living in a time now that uh, education, we all know, is very, very important to have. It's very important to have but it's more to education than just getting an education, just sitting in the classroom and dotting your I's and crossing your T's and making sure you're following APA and all of that. It's more than that. Young people, older, middle-aged folks, uh, the people that are sitting in your class uh, have issues, problems, and things in their, that they're experiencing, and, and the community has issues and things in which we're experiencing. People bring those situations to your classroom. So if you're not focused, if you're just focused on providing the structure and the education, you'll miss all the other things that are connected to that individual that could propel them to be a great student. Um, so I, I think it's so important to have a, a very wide vision of what's going on in the, in the community, but also know your students individually, uh, be inspirational leaders, be servant leaders, recognizing our purpose for being here is to educate them, but also to put them on a level playing field that will give them an opportunity to be successful in this big world that's outside of these doors. That is such an important role that you have. I know you take it seriously, but I can tell you, I would not have been able to be as successful. And I have great parents. I don't ever want to forget them. My parents are very important to the stability in my life and still are. 
but the foundation came from people like you in, this, in the audience that made a difference for me to be able to step out this door and be a success story for my community and for my family. So thank you. Well, I hope you've enjoyed going down memory lane with us, as well as hearing from our alumni panel on how FSCJ has impacted them in achieving their personal, professional, and academic goals. And I would thank you, our panelists, for joining us today. Congratulations, Jackie. We wish all of you much success in your endeavors. Let's give our panelists another round of applause. You know, I just wanted, I was thinking about the four of them up there, many of whom I've, I've worked with and uh, look forward to uh, that. You know, Jacqueline, I just want to say to you as a practicing lawyer, it's a big deal. Congratulations. That's really outstanding. And Kathy, for the work you do for the students at Nassau County, we, you know, we've really got a great opportunity. We have a great partnership with Kathy. Looking forward to developing a really strong partnership with our new Duval Superintendent, Diana Green. Just, I think it's going to continue to pay a lot of dividends for us. Chief, I always call him Chief Charles, um, truly one of the great servant leaders of Jacksonville. So thank you, Chief, for that. And then Deborah, you know, with your enthusiasm when you're a nurse, it would be worth getting sick just to have you care for us. <laughs> but I want to thank you for all for really bringing home the value of, of what this institution does. Before we close today, I want you to look at the chair you're sitting in. Because I saw something yesterday that was really impressive, and that was these 1,350 chairs being put out in this gym. That took a lot of work. I saw people collating the programs that you're holding in your hand, people getting ready for every aspect of that today. And while we can't call everybody out for name, on the back of your program are the people who were responsible for putting this together. If you see them, thank them, but let's do it publicly right now. And I certainly want to thank all those who spoke today. Yes, Joe, I will take an override. I will enroll in your class. And You know, the president should get an A by default, right? <laughs> exactly. But Joe, thank you. You really kicked us off well. Finally, again, let me just close by saying it, it is really an honor to work with you. I'm excited about this year ahead. I look forward to seeing what the work we can do together. I hope you feel that sense of enthusiasm. As we go forward this afternoon, some of you are going to be continuing to work in the plenary sessions, but tomorrow when we really kick off in high gear, I really appreciate the work you're doing. And with that, we are closed. Thank you very much.